No two people work in the same way. I have a giant rubber Godzilla on my desk. You may have a fish tank. You could be in a situation where you work in the studio or at home and share a computer with a coworker or a family member. One of you likes to have the tools and palettes all the way to the left of the screen, while another one of you wants to have everything placed on the bottom. So Photoshop is here to accommodate your work style by providing you with a way to create your own customizable workspace. You can even make more than one for the type of job you may have to work on. One thing I really appreciate in an application is the ability to create a workspace that suits my preferred way of working. I like the option of placing tools where I want them because I don't want to fight with an interface that a team of programmers decided would be best for me. I'm the type of person who would rather spend a day setting up my entire studio in preparation of upcoming work so that I can then get to the business of design without having to stop to locate all of my tools and my files all over my office. To create a custom workspace, all you need to do is place your favorite palettes where you'd like them to appear when you invoke the workspace in Photoshop. What's nice about workspaces is that you can make them in both Photoshop and the bridge and they work in exactly the same way. What I'm going to do is set up a workspace in Photoshop and what I'm going to do is set this one up for painting work or airbrush work because once I got used to using Photoshop to paint I pretty much put my Iowata airbrush away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the palettes that I want to see such as Navigator I'm going to get rid of my info and histogram. I definitely like to see my swatches and my color. I don't need styles. History is always important. I don't really need action, so I'll take that out. And layers is something that is critical for me. So I'm going to go ahead and put my swatches where I want them. I'm going to go ahead and grab my color, put that where I want it as well. Let me just put that right there at the bottom, like to snap it so I can be nice and neat. And I'm going to put my navigator right about here. I'm pretty much happy with this, so I'm going to go to my window menu. I'm going to choose workspace, and then I'm going to choose save workspace. What happens now is I'm presented with a dialog box that's going to say, hey man, rename this if you want to, because untitled doesn't tell you anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this painting. I also have the option of capturing any other settings with this workspace. For example, automatically I want to of course capture all my palette locations because I replace them where I want them. So I want them all here so I want to capture that so I have a check mark here. If I want to capture any keyboard shortcuts along with this workspace I would go ahead and select this as well. And the same applies to menus. If I made any menus or changed or modified the menus so that I can just focus on painting and not see anything else. Once I'm happy with this I'll go ahead and click save and now I can go to my window menu, workspace and along the bottom here you see that painting is now an option. I also created two other workspaces earlier. One for Die Hard Small which is the name of my company, Die Hard Studio, and Die Hard Large and I use this setting when I'm at full resolution. So let's go ahead and take a look at what Die Hard Small looks like. And as you see here everything is pretty much ready for me to work at a small resolution. And let's go back to Window Workspace and choose the painting one we just created and just like that everything is the way you want it. This is a great technique to use as far as creating a workspace that's good for right handers, left handers. It's a great way to make sure that everybody in your studio or office has their own workspace so you, they can get to work without having to worry about oh man I moved Bob's palettes over here and I know he likes them over here. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Now let's talk about how to get rid of workspaces just in case Bob got fired. So we can go to our window menu, workspace, choose delete workspace, and then the list appears and we can choose painting which Bob made. Bob's not here anymore. Goodbye painting. Delete. We'll get of course the dialogue warning that says do you really want to get rid of this? Yes. And now that workspace is no longer available. Workspaces are a convenient way to change the way you work on the fly when sharing a computer with other people or just to change the tools you need to perform certain tasks.